Hey, how have you been? It's been a long time, hasn't it? I miss you so much, and honestly, you're the only thing on my mind these days. I hope you're doing well over there. I used to be really mad that I never got a response from you. Writing these letters is what keeps me sane after you left. I was devastated. Well, still am. Still can't stop thinking about you and when I'd see you again. Well, here's another letter from me. And I know it's a bit late this time round, but the last couple of days have been strange. Oh, how I wish you'd been here to comfort me, to tell me that I'm okay. But, well, you aren't. A little self-pity and a bottle of whatever I can afford to buy with the money I save is the only kind of consolation I get now. Whatever happened last week, I don't think I really understand, but maybe I don't want to. I'm in great pain, physically as well as mentally. I'm in anguish. I don't know why what happened did happen, but it did. There's no denying it. There are monsters in this world true and real monsters, scarier than those things that come at us in our nightmares. Maybe this world is a waking nightmare. If you think about it, it is. Every waking second. Oh. Do you remember all those deep, half-asleep conversations we had? How you told me I was going to drive myself crazy with all that overthinking. <laughs> I miss that now. I'm sorry. I'm a little drunk right now, just a little. Shouldn't matter much. Anyway, that last letter I wrote you. Did you get a chance to read it yet? Not really sure if you did, but then again, I don't know if you read anything I send you. The mailbox must be full of letters. Poor little Blair's tiny, plain, white letter must get lost in there somewhere. Sorry, I'm going off again. It's just, um, I've been a mess lately big mess. Life has been bland, and in the last letter I sent you, I told you how I was going to do it, didn't I? How I was going to end it all. The pain of existence I carry with me everywhere. I know, I know. I said it a million times already, but yes, it did have to do with you. And no, I don't blame you for my pain. That's just me. Guess I'm more fragile than I think I am. Getting that confession off my chest isn't even embarrassing now. Like I said, I feel nothing these days. Everything is bland. I was up really early that day. I remember it being 4am because I couldn't believe it myself. It was too perfect. I hadn't set an alarm, but I did check my phone the first thing in the morning. The night before, I didn't really care when I woke up. I just went to sleep and decided to go on with it whenever I was up. That 4am was so perfect. It was like a sign. Perfect day to do it. The time on my phone wanted to do it. The bed wanted me to do it. If there's a god, I'm sure he wanted me to do it as well. Even I wanted it. There was nothing that could stop me now. It was a strange feeling. Yes, it was. The universe agreeing with you when you wanted to kill yourself wasn't exactly something to be excited about. This is a very hateful world. Everything in this world wants you gone. Nothing loves you. Nothing cares about you. Nothing truly feels. That I know was sure, because I sure didn't feel as much as a little speck of anything. Well, this is how I plan to do it. I didn't tell it to you in the last letter, but here it is, my master plan. I was going to walk for a while. A long walk to the park. You know which one. There, on that special bench where I'd sat alone for hours on the day you left. I'd sit and let myself bleed to death. It's called exsanguination. I looked it up. There's a new word for you. Well, I planned to slit my wrist at first, but that'd be really slow and I couldn't risk anyone finding me. I couldn't stand life anymore. You have to understand. It wasn't that there was something really wrong with me, it was just, well, everyone else in the world had something wrong with them. And as it turned out later that day, it was true. Well, I put on a scarf and a coat. I know what I was going to do, but I wanted to at least die comfortably. I wanted to carry out a blanket with me for extra comfort. 
but that would just look silly. So I locked the door behind me, touching it one last time, I'm trying to feel that feeling of touching that damn door one last time. I didn't know what I would miss once I died. It didn't feel the same this time. In fact, it felt warm. Strangely warm. Don't know why, but I wanted to pull the door out and give it an embrace. Oh, I would miss you, door. Walked down the steps and out onto the streets. Glorious. It took a while to reach the park, but I did. And took my queen's chair to rule over the world of park benches with my initials carved on them. Sitting down, I got the tiny box cutter I would got for myself the day before. Raised it up to my neck, ready to bleed to death. A sweet relief for me. Life hadn't been kind to me. Why should I? In that moment, everything about you flashed in my eyes. Everything you did, no, no matter how much we'd fought over it, no matter how much I hated you for it, I know you had me somewhere in your heart while you did, and maybe all these letters I've been writing to you all this while, well, I'm asking you for your forgiveness. I know it's too late to apologise to you, but please, I never had it in me to ask for it before. I did hate you, yes, and I did wish you dead, but all that didn't last, as you can tell. People may call you a terrible human being. People may hate you for what you did, but I don't. In that instance of realisation, I felt a strangeness in the air. I knew this instant that I wasn't alone. Maybe it's just near certain death that we begin to really notice things, but in that moment, I could see with my eyes closed. He came out of nowhere, rushing to me and asking if I was okay. For some reason, I can't remember his face. I do remember his clean-shaven face, green eyes and slightly large build, but well, he was tall and a little overweight, and there was something about him. In that instant, everything froze for a moment. I heard him speak, but I didn't listen. I saw his lips move as he tried desperately to get me to drop the blades. He then said something and looked at me. I raised my head silently, answering yes to whatever he'd asked, and in the response put a thin smile on his face. He awkwardly put his hand on my shoulder and escorted me back to his car. Now, maybe it was just my state of mind at the time, but I really don't know why I went along with him. I actually didn't want to, but I didn't refuse either. I just blankly accepted whatever he said, with either a yes or a thank you, and he seemed to be satisfied with that. I don't remember much about him, like I said, but, but I do remember that satisfied grin he had every time he heard me speak. Well, the house was a mess, and from the moment I entered it, I smelled it. That sweet, familiar smell. That smell I loved as much as I hated. Alcohol. And I knew from the instant I was there, there was lots of it. He sat me down on a plain chair and offered me a cup of stale coffee and that same grin to go with it. For some reason, I didn't mind. I took it. Don't remember much after that, except crying. Lots and lots of crying. And there were those sounds of singing. Singing in the rain. I remember it so vividly. I can't write this. <laughs> I just can't. Those are the things I do not want in my mind. And it feels like feels so strange, like they're there and aren't there at the same time. I don't remember most of it because, well, my mind hides it from me, but I'm not an idiot. The great overthinker I am, I know exactly what happened. And even though you know it hurts right in this, you need to know. You must know everything. I don't think I was there in the dark basement for too long. My mind was blank most of the time. I do remember being given injections from time to time, too weak to fight back, and then being left alone again. I wished, truly, at that moment, to die, to go away. I should have gone on with it faster. Whatever these people were going to do to me, or perhaps had already done, death would definitely be kinder to me. 
Then, there was that night. That night I remember everything. I remember seeing the man come into the basement and take his belt off. All sense of time has gone around this time, but I could tell that this was late night, judging by the man's look. He'd been out drinking. Definitely had friends over. He did call out to them from time to time. They called out to him, too. I do remember what was said, but I don't want to go over them. My skin becomes a tight prison once I think about it. My only urge is to cut free. Yes, I did cut myself. Several times, in fact. It's the only way I can breathe. At least, now that is. I don't know, but this body is a strange design. We're all like tiny vessels of red ink. The way this ink pours can tell so many different stories. So much about the person. Oh, I'm going off again. I think maybe my drunk mind is trying to avoid remembering the incident as much as me. But, but if I want you to know the truth, I need to endure it. Maybe a little longer. I'll try my best. I wasn't crying that night. There was something off about tonight. I felt nothing. I could feel, but I couldn't. I don't know if that makes sense, does it? Well, the man was done and proceeded to put on his belt again when he smiled at me and then froze. He saw something. I didn't know what it was at the time, but he looked behind me, terrified. I didn't care what he saw, but that look gave me more satisfaction than anything in a long time. To see him. A man whom at that moment I saw as the most evil thing this universe had produced. Apparently seeing something far worse than him. Should I have been afraid? Probably, but not at this time. What could something that evil do to me that wasn't done already? I was just preparing for death anyway, wasn't I? And then it revealed itself. And the last thing I remember before passing out was the look of complete and utter fear in the man's face as the thing walked closer to it. Eight feet tall, brown and mutilated flesh. I think hell opened its gates and let something out. Something that genuinely cared. Something that wanted me safe. Maybe some of the things we fear are actually there to protect us. To keep us safe. To put itself in harm's way, just so we can be safe. Whatever this thing was, it did something bad to the man, and I wasn't given the details. The psychiatrist had considered me too vulnerable to know at that point. I'm sure she'd be proud once she knows how much I'm drinking right now. <laughs> Obviously, she wouldn't care. I'm just another job, nothing more. Oh, and, well, I found your ring. It's funny how at the police station I finally found the thing. I know it might sound strange, but it was on my finger all along. I'm not sure about that anymore. I'm not sure about anything. The world we live in is strange, and we make it stranger. That sweet surprise I got when I felt my face scratch while rubbing my palm against my tearing face. I don't know why you didn't take it. Or maybe it was given to me. Like I said, I just don't know. Whatever that thing was... I've been feeling safe ever since. Especially after hearing about the gruesome details. I know how much you hate violence, so I won't say much, but it was very, very bad. There were organs and blood everywhere. Like a blender had gone off there and... <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why I wanted you to know this, but I feel like you needed to know. It made me feel satisfied. Maybe waiting for God's miracle all along. Something else finally took sympathy on me and gave me what I needed. Whoever it is out there, be sure to thank them for me. I'll be leaving this ring with a letter. It belongs to me much more than you. I know how strange this all seems. I can't accept it either. But then, I guess that's how it is. And as long as I live and... Yes, I did choose life. I'll have to learn to accept it. Goodbye. I'll not be writing to you again, I guess. Maybe it is time to move on. 
I'll give it a try. Maybe I will last longer this time. Goodbye, and with much love. Rest in peace, Mom. Blair. Hey there. Thank you so much for taking the time to drop by and listen to this story today. It really means a lot to me. I put a lot of time and effort into making these videos, so it's nice to know that there's someone out there listening. Do me a little favor, would you? Click that like button, leave a comment, and if you really feel like it, why not subscribe too? Okay, happy tales everyone. See you soon.